Hey everyone, my name is Brandon Levine, and today we will be learning how to connect an AM server to a MySQL database. So by connecting to a database, we'll be able to achieve many different things we may desire, like inserting and storing data, pre-populating forms, retrie retrieving data, and so on. So the first step in this process is to download the JDBC driver for our MySQL database so that it will allow AM and the database to, to uh, communicate with each other. So I'm currently looking uh, at the MySQL website, and I'm currently on the web page where we can download that driver that will let AM communicate with the database. So you'll have to navigate to this website. I'll provide a link in the description below. And then you can uh, select the correct operating system and then go ahead and download the file or the jar file. So when you download the jar file, mine's on my desktop. Uh, we can go ahead and navigate to AM. So let me go ahead and go. So I'm gonna navigate to my AM server and then we can just change the URL to the correct one. So it's gonna be in system console. Then we want it to go to bundles. And once that page loads, we can then install the driver on to AM. So what you'll do is you'll click on the install slash update button. You will then choose the file you just downloaded so it should be the jar file. You'll select that. Then you can go ahead and click the start bundle and then click install or update. So I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna do this part. But once it's finished installing, uh, you can make sure that it has uh, started properly or installed and started properly. So we can search for the driver, just control Fing, uh, just type in my SQL. And then here's our driver. We can see that it's currently active. And so that looks good for now. And now we want to navigate to the configuration management screen. So we can change the bundles right here in the URL to config man manager. And this will navigate us to the configuration screen where we can navigate or we, where we can configure the properties for our uh, data source. All right, so now that it's loaded, uh, we can go ahead and find the uh, right uh, configuration. So there's a lot of different uh, things we can configure in here. So the easiest way is to search for it. And the one I'm looking for is type in data source. So I'll usually be the first one that pops up. And the one I'm gonna be using today is the Apache Sling Connection Pool data source. So it, there may be some slight variations in this tutorial for you, um, but the configurations are pretty much the same. And you can see I already have one configured right here. So I'm gonna go into the edit mode and tell you what I've uh, inputted for my, for my values for my environment. So the data source name, this is gonna be what you see uh, later on at AM when we try to uh, integrate the data source with our, uh, or when we try to make a data model. We will be using something called Brandon's database. Um, the data source that name, that's, I just left that as is. Uh, our JDBC driver class, uh, this is, I believe is standard for the MySQL one, which is com.mysql.jdbc.driver. And then we have a JDBC connection URI. So this connects it to the uh, MySQL database. So this may look a little different for you. Uh, mine's on port 3306. And then the slash Brandon, the Brandon is the schema name for your database. So this will probably probably be different for you um, unless you're using my name, then that'd be pretty nice. Uh, and the username and root, this is what you use to log on to the, your database. So the username is root and then my password is uh, there as well. And that's actually it for all those properties and make sure to save it at the bottom. And then once you've saved it, you can go ahead and test it out and I'll show you a, pretty easy way to see if everything configured properly. So we will go to the AM homepage. Now that we are on the AM homepage, we can navigate to forms, then to data integrations, and then we'll go ahead and click on create to create a new form data model. And then we'll just give it a title for demo. And then we'll navigate to the database we just made, which is gonna be Brandon's database. Click create then edit. Then we can see our database 
is right here. And if it's wrong, uh, or if we've configured it incorrectly, you'll see a little red triangle right here with an exclamation point in the middle. And then if we click this drop down arrow, we can see uh, all of our different tables we have in our schema. Then we can go further down and look out look at all the different fields. And that is where I'm going to stop for today. I want to thank you guys for watching and listening to today's video. Um, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you have a nice day.